The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seed. So Ken, you've just completed the second year of Pride's 300 bushel initiative program for corn. Um, what kind of results did you see in 2012? Well, results like uh, like all harvest results in Ontario and, and for the most part uh, North America wide in corn this year, extremely variable. I would say in comparison to 2011, 2011 when we looked at the additional inputs to push corn yields, uh, really to summarize 2011, last year we couldn't do anything wrong. Uh, we threw fungicide, extra population, and extra nitrogen in a corn crop, and we got economic response 100% of the time. That was 2011. 2012, uh, much more variable, and uh, you know we can talk about different crop inputs like fungicide and nitrogen as the drivers of yield. 2012 sure proved that rainfall is a big driver of yield as well. Um, the areas that got rain, uh, beautiful responses to, to the inputs applied. And uh, certainly the additional inputs, the, the intensive management, great response. Uh, areas that really struggled went that, that intense seven to nine week drought that lasted up to two weeks past pollination where it really became critical. Uh, uh, where it really became critical, that drought stress through pollination. Really, the, the corn crop was beyond the point of no return in some of those cases. We didn't see the response to inputs in those instances. So we had quite variable results. Um, in, our, in our findings, if you want to look at, at averaging out the results, about 75% of the time we received an economic benefit, an economic return on investment for throwing basically some additional seed, uh, some extra nitrogen, in some cases significantly more nitrogen, and, uh, and headline fungicide applied at the tassel stage. And in one instance, uh, the, the headline uh, uh, fungicide was actually applied at the, uh, the V5 stage, so five leaf corn. Uh, we saw economic benefit there about three quarters of the time. So quite happy with that given the, the high stress conditions that we went through. If somebody came to your farm as a corn grower and, and said, I have a proposal here that you should try on your acres, it's going to work in three quarters of your field with this percent benefit payback, it probably looks pretty good across, uh, across the entire operation. So we're quite pleased with the results, although not quite as glowing as 2011. If you summarize the individual inputs, on headline, we, we achieved an average yield benefit of about seven bushels the acre. So using, you know, five, $5 corn, it was still somewhat economic. The benefits are always there in every case of, of the, the better plant health at harvest, you know, more plant intactness, which, uh, which just makes for a much nicer job of harvest, a cleaner job harvesting, less trash through the machine. It takes less power to harvest that healthy corn and, and easier to clean up the sample by the time it hits the bin in behind you. So um, really loving the fungicide aspect of this. The additional seed, uh, here we are as a seed company saying basically the additional seed, not in dramatic amounts, um, five to seven percent more and not only the additional seed, uh, it kind of equates to the Christmas dinners we all just went through. You can't feed a family of 20 what you feed a family of 10. Um, you need a bigger roast, basically, or you need a bigger turkey. And that's really the, the, the comparison when we look at additional seed population in a cornfield, is we need to take that additional seed and we need to provide it with more feed. We need to provide it with more inputs to, to make it all dovetail together into a complete production system. So. Fungicide, absolutely. The additional seed, take a hard look at it and make it work into the rest of the production system. Nitrogen, and nitrogen is really the, the gas in the tank of the race car when you look at an input to, to a corn crop. The question with nitrogen is, uh, you know, we do have to be mindful of good stewardship. We've proven that we can get response, economic response, to some pretty high rates of nitrogen, well over 200 bushel. However, uh, economically across the entire field, and from an environmental stewardship standpoint, sometimes that rate doesn't always make sense. So our next challenge is to try to address how and where do we deliver the right rates of nitrogen across the field, depending on field conditions and variability or, or uh, just the overall ability of that crop in the field to respond to the extra end. That's our next challenge here. We saw a response to the extra nitrogen. Uh, I think any corn agronomist will tell you that if you go into drought short of available end of that corn plant, you're in a lot of trouble at that V8, V10 stage. So where we had that available nitrogen there, we certainly saw the response, although it was not as consistent as 2011. My key take home is, uh, is for corn producers, really understand the role that nitrogen plays. 
there are a lot of growers out there I think that are probably slightly under fertilizing their corn crop in terms of nitrogen or perhaps using the right rate but may have to look at the delivery methods in terms of both uh, the form of product, uh, securing availability uh, of the product to the crop and then the, the timing of the application. So the rate might be right, we just may have to look at maybe splitting it or something to that effect. Um, the corn crop responds to nitrogen. There's no question about that. We've proven that response. Now we've got to figure out what's the best way to approach each individual field. Really key for corn growers to, to work with agronomy support people, whether it's, uh, whether it's your seed dealer or your agronomy input supplier, a third-party agronomist. Your agronomy support people really need to be sound when it comes to soil fertility management in general and nitrogen management in particular because that that is where... Uh, that soil fertility aspect uh, is where you can get your, uh, it's your bit, it's your largest input, but it's also your biggest payback in terms of inputs. For full results on the Pride Seeds 300 bushel initiative, you can go to the Pride Seeds homepage at prideseeds.com. But to share some details, everybody asked what the high yield was, and our high yield on a, on a 10 acre whole field approach exceeded 250 bushel, which we're quite happy with given the year. And in that particular case, with the aggressive management we used there, the response for that grower was over 30 bushels. So by all means economic, that grower did get some rains that other areas didn't get that. That goes without saying with that kind of a yield. We're really encouraged with the areas where we had 150 to 200 bushel yields and the responses that we got, although that response may have been a little bit more limited by the lack of rainfall. There's still some evidence there that we can help a crop ward off drought stress by managing it a little bit more intensively and hoping for some well-timed rain to, to make the crop produce yield. Overall, our responses were about 14 to 25 bushels an acre. In one case, we were over 30, as I mentioned. So overall, given the 2011 results I discussed and then the 2012 results, really looking forward to the 2013 crop year. We're gonna look at a couple of different tools in terms of corn management. We're also going to expand the project into soybeans and we really feel that uh, there's some exciting things happening out there. Genetics keep advancing all the time to break new yield barriers. The equipment keeps improving and growers' education in terms of growing crops. The know-how keeps improving in the marketplace. So really excited to break some new yield barriers in 2013.